What's up, Bug Doug with D&E in the Garage? We get a ton of questions to D&E &E in the Garage. Some of them are technical, some of them are otherwise, and a lot of them, I think, would benefit more people than just who's asking the question. So last month we started the viewer question video thing. I'm gonna do another one today. I've compiled enough questions that uh, I think everybody might be able to benefit from. So we're gonna go through some of those questions today and spread a little bit of knowledge because that's what DNA in the Garage is all about. First question comes from Trevor O. This came just the other day. Why do so many Jeepers hate AC? I love mine. I can go wheel it in the summer and have in my interior a nice cool 55 degrees. All right, this was on Eric's uh, AC fan delete or AC pump delete video. A lot of couple people were like, why are you deleting your AC? And better than any explanation I could give, uh, one of our awesome overseas viewers, John, uh, gave me the answer, if you don't have it, it can't break. And that's really what it is. A lot of Jeepers delete their AC because it's one less thing to break, or they delete it because it broke. The AC pump went, you had an AC leak, rather than fix it, you know, it's just a, a dirt princess anyway, so delete that AC, get it out of there. Yes, I hate being hot, I love having AC. This Jeep right here, my WJ, does not have AC anymore. It broke and I just said, screw it, I'm not fixing it, it's an off-roader, I'll have to just put the windows down. I actually have a fan in here somewhere, I don't know where it is that I plug in, does the job. So that is why a lot of people uh, delete their AC. Now, if we were Florida Jeepers, that might be a different story. Uh, Trevor, you might be from Florida and you're saying, what in the world is wrong with you? Um, but up here in the north, you can make it the few months where it's unbearable with no AC. Douglas Crow says, my concern over adding an alternator with that much amperage would be burning out the ECM. How is it working out for you? Any problems? He's of course referring to the uh, ace, uh, excuse me, alternator swap that we did in Eric ZJ. We took the stock 90 amp alternator and we swapped it for a 130 amp alternator from a Dodge truck. We did that because uh, it's Eric's plow vehicle and the winch constantly going up and down as a winch driven plow was killing his battery. His headlights would dim every time he uh, you know, hit the winch. So adding the larger amp, a uh, uh, larger amp alternator uh, cured that. And I've had a lot of people asking like, well, what about the wiring? You got to upgrade the wiring. And what about the ECM? What about your accessories? You're going to fry stuff. I'm not an electric, <laughs> electronical engineer here, but um, here is my very limited understanding of the system and why it works. The power being pulled from the alternator is regulated. It's not just unlimited power, all right? The engine and the ECM and the other accessories are only pulling what they need. So we didn't increase the amperage going into the whole system. We just increased the potential of the Jeep and we, we put more power on demand. Um, so it's not a problem. We have had no issues. It's been a year, no burned up wires. I suppose at a certain point you would have to upgrade your wiring. It does not seem like going from 90 amp to 130 is that. The wires don't get hot. We haven't had any blown fuses, anything like that. So I don't know, man. Proof's in the pudding, right? Jack, username Jack, that's it, said, is the five speed ZJ an actual thing or is it just an urban legend? Jack, I can tell you for a fact, the five-speed ZJ is not an urban legend. Here's what happened. In 1993, when they first put out the very first Grand Cherokee, the ZJ, they didn't have a transmission for it yet. They were still producing the 4.2 RE, which went in the, the ZJs and the WJs that had uh, the 4-liter. So in, what they did is they gave the 4-liter ZJ in 1993 the same transmission options, options that the XJ has. And in 93, what transmission options did the XJ have? The AW4 automatic that my XJ has has and most do and the AX5 uh, manual five speed so in 93 you could get a four liter ZJ excuse me a four yeah four liter Jesus um, ZJ with a five speed they're really cool they're really really rare they didn't make them after 93 they're insanely hard to find and Eric and I have a friend who has one all right it's currently in the process of getting a motor swap um, I've been meaning to talk to him about maybe taking the camera over there. If you wouldn't mind, Steve, if you're seeing this, we'd love to come and do a little profile on your ZJ. If you don't mind, I just want people to understand that they are in fact real. Here's the thing. You get the question all the time. Well, can't I just swap in an AX5 now? Sure. You can swap anything in anything. You know what I mean? Let's put a LS in your smart car. I mean, it's doable if you got a big enough hacksaw on enough time, right? Um, the problem is there are two things that are not going to be clean installs. All right, the first is gonna be your shifter bezel down here. The center console is obviously different in a five-speed ZJ than it would be in an automatic ZJ. You're not gonna have the right shifter boot and all that. I'm sure you can make something work. The bigger problem 
is your tachometer is not going to work. You have to have a different gauge cluster to make the AX5 uh, transmission link up with the um, uh, tachometer in the ZJ. So these there's these very few um, gauge clusters for the five-speed ZJs. They're incredibly rare, and if you want to do a clean install, you need to find one. Now, of course, you could use an aftermarket tachometer or just not have a tachometer or whatever, but if you really want to do a clean install, that's the only way. So, Jack, yes, they exist. They absolutely exist. Uh, I'm hoping to at least get some footage of one, and maybe someday uh, I will own one. I would love to own one of those because that's just cool as heck. Blake Gibbons says, I don't have a check engine light, but my cat is for sure bad. You can even hear it rattling around. I already failed inspection one time. Are there any other ways you think I could pass actual emissions? This is a question I get a lot. Uh, we did a video, um, I don't know, about a year ago on Cat Clean. It's this product you put in your gas tank and it'll blow some of the carbon and soot off your catalytic converter. And sometimes it'll fix an O2 sensor code or a catalytic converter system uh, inefficiency code. Sometimes, all right? It depends on how far your cat is. And there are different levels of a bad cat. There's the bad cat that's a little bit clogged. That's what this will solve. Then there's cats that are completely clogged. This probably isn't gonna solve it. Then, unfortunately, Blake, there's cats like yours that have broken away. If you don't know what the inside of a catalytic converter looks like, it's this matrix of long tubes that your exhaust blows through, and in that process, a chemical reaction catalyzes, obviously, as the name suggests, and it cleans your exhaust. If a piece of that matrix breaks off, you'll hear it rattling around and then there's nothing you can do to fix your cat. It's not, you're getting an inefficiency code because your cat is broken. It's not working anymore. What usually happens is your cat clogs solid and the back pressure is so much that it breaks a piece off. Or sometimes you'll hit your muffler or your catalytic converter on something. The way to test this, go underneath with a little hammer and just tap on your cat, all right? It should sound a little bit hollow, a little bit tinny. If you get a dull thud, it means it's probably clogged all the way through, and if you hear stuff rattling, you know it's broken, and then Cataclean's not gonna help you. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. Just gotta get a new cat. TZV says, when are you going to make a video on getting 25 miles per gallon from a four liter WJ? That question comes from something I've said a couple times. This Jeep we're sitting in right now, when I first got it, uh, I, I wasn't cutting it up to be an off-roader. It was my daily and I was driving all over the place. My wife, when I first met my wife, she lived in, in Utica, New York. I lived in uh, Northwest New Jersey. It's about four hours away. So every weekend I was going up there to see her. Eric and I made this WJ right here a hyper mile Jeep, all right? It was getting 25 miles per gallon on, on the highway. And I've made that claim a bunch of times and people said, how, you know, what, what mods did you do? What did you have to do? And I've promised a video explaining that. Now here's the thing. Eric and I want to do that video. We're dying to, especially Eric. Eric's a miles per gallon guy. He, he's a hyper miler. He knows all this stuff. Uh, we did all the testing on this WJ. We want to get our hands on another WJ. We don't want to just do a video where I tell you about the mods. We want to do them so I can show you. So we're trying right now to put some money aside and find some ways to maybe raise some money on the channel to get our hands on like an 04 Laredo and just build it up from the ground up to prove to you guys that you can get build a four liter WJ that gets like 18, 19 around town and then 25 on the highway. So bear with us, we are working on it. I've said this before, it'd be so much easier if we were like beauty bloggers or like one of those food channels where you just taste food all the time. That's easy and it's not lessening what they do, but it's so much less expensive. Making vehicle videos on, you know, installs of parts and upgrades of parts, freaking expensive, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're barely holding our households together normally, let alone trying to buy a project vehicle for the channel. So we want to do that, but we want to do it right. I don't want to half-ass that very cool thing because there's nobody out there talking about in a, in a major way how to get more miles per gallon out of a Jeep. Here's, here's what people usually do. They put 32s on it, they cut up the bumpers, they add a bunch of heavy accessories, then they ask how they can get better mileage. No, sorry man, <laughs> you're, you're doing this wrong. So what we really wanna do is take our time, wait until we can get our hands on a Laredo, and then we're gonna do a budget um, not budget, but a, a miles per gallon build. So if you guys can hold on, I get a lot of questions for that, a lot, because it's an outlandish claim. I know it is, but I'm telling you, this Jeep right here, this Jeep right here, she got 25 miles a gallon on the highway, which I know isn't great, but for a four liter, it's pretty darn good, you know? Um, moving on. All right, I put up a question yesterday. I found this new feature on 
YouTube where I can um, ask you guys like direct questions and poll questions. And I've been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, if you don't know where it is, it's on the community tab on our homepage of the, for the channel. Uh, there's like, you know, home, videos, whatever else, community. If you're ever interested, um, and so I, I polled you guys asking what you'd want to know in this uh, questions episode. Let's go through some of the questions here. Um, I didn't read these beforehand, so this may get messy. Can you do a walk around your Jeeps and... T oh, uh, Emilio21 says, can you do a walk around your Jeeps and tell what mods you have done to the Jeeps? That is also coming. Um, Eric and I... I mean, listen, man. Who who builds a Jeep that doesn't want to talk about it, right? We get questions all the time for walk arounds. Um, we don't want those videos to be corny and, like, half-assed, so... Uh, this one needs a little bit of work right now. Some of you know from reading the communities tab that my water pump's blown. As soon as I get a chance to fix that, maybe I'll take this out on a trail somewhere. We'll do a walk around. Uh, the next time there's snow, I think Eric and I might do a walk around on his ZJ because his ZJ is a plow vehicle. So to do a proper walk around, it's got to be in its element. So those videos are coming as well. It's super cool to have people interested in our Jeeps. I mean, these things are our personality. You know, that's we made a whole channel about it. This is what we do. These Jeeps have our blood, sweat, and tears in them. So to have you guys be interested in what we've done to them is incredibly flattering. We definitely want to take that opportunity to talk to you all about them. Emilio, stay tuned. I promise that's coming. Ranger Pete 1994 is telling me about his XJ. He says, I got a uh, I have a 20, 2001 XJ in solar yellow. I love that color. The solar yellow is so freaking cool, man. I know some people really hate it. I want a yellow Jeep so bad. So bad. Uh, a rare one. Yeah, he pointed out. An eye catcher for sure. Ranger P, you're 100% sure. It's in really good shape. I bought it last year, but since then I've been undecided about putting some mods on it. What do you think? Lift it and take it on the trail or keep it stock? It's hard, dude. It's real hard. Because obviously they're Jeeps and they're, it's an extra, man. They're super capable. And mods are super inexpensive. There's a ton of aftermarket support. It's not hard, but you said it right there. It's a rare color Jeep in really good shape. If it were me, I might put a small lift in it and some, you know, spend the money on some real nice tires and maybe a set of KC lights or something and kind of ride it around looking a little bit pretty. If I could go back in time, I would hack up this Jeep less. It's not rare, but I love it. It's my baby. And I might, I would do things differently. If I could talk to 10 years ago, Doug, and be like, hey, buddy, <laughs> take it easy with that cutoff wheel, man. Slow down. <laughs> you know, because uh, you can't ever go back. And then you take it on the trail and you start really thrashing stuff, you know. Um, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing. If you can, if you really have that trail bug and, and you can afford it, maybe get a beater XJ, you know, build that one up and, and try to keep the solar yellow one you know, for, for future generations. I, I don't know, man. You got to make that call yourself, but I dig your Jeep and I'd love to see a picture of it. If you want to shoot it over to us on Facebook, I love that color, man. Real cool. Brightest Bryson says, please add ZJ content or at least have a friend over and talk about the strong points and differences it has from the beloved XJ. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Uh, Eric's got the ZJ. We get a ton of requests for ZJ content. I'm going to let you guys in on a secret here. I started this channel because there wasn't enough Grand Cherokee content for me on the internet. I'll tell you exactly. I started this because I was a huge, and I still am a huge Bleepin' Jeep fan. Love Bleepin' Jeep. Watch every video that Matt puts out. I, and I was like, damn, man, I just want to see more Grand Cherokee content. You know, he did do the, the cheap Jeep, which I loved. He never did anything on a WJ. Recently, he does a little bit with his son's WJ. But uh, so I, my thought process was, hey, man, let's make a Bleepin' Jeep style channel that... Um, does a little bit more with Grand Cherokees. Now, two things got off the roads there. First of all, I'm not Matt. He's a generational talent when it comes to do this kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been able to do the epic level of stuff that he does. And second of all, when I started the channel, I had two Grand Cherokees. I had this one and I dailyed a 2002 WJ. Uh, I sold that and I bought an XJ and then I had to fix up the XJ. So the last year of videos have been XJ videos. I get that. Um, but we're trying to get back to WJs and ZJs. That's actually why I'm doing this video in my WJ. But uh, I'm going to start doing more WJ content. Eric's going to start doing more ZJ content. Um, that's another thing. I tell you, we want to try to get a project vehicle. If we can't get our hands on a cheap Laredo and we find a cheap ZJ, we might do a, a bleeping Jeep style uh, cheap off-road bill ZJ. But I promise you, Grand Cherokee content is coming. We also 
love the XJ. Those are still going to be around because I'm still daily in an XJ, but yeah, man, bright as Bryson. We got you. I hope I didn't murder your name there. Gary Ginkovich says, worst breakdown story or oh shite moment uh, that minted you as a jeeper, cop evasion, trespassing while wheeling or sketchy impromptu urban four-wheeling over medians and curbs, then park. <laughs> he goes on. Uh, I won't make a whole thing of this. I'll, I'll tell you two uh, very quick stories. One, I told you my wife lived in Utica when I first met her. I would drive the 260 miles uh, every weekend just about, or she would come down. One weekend I go up there in this WJ. This is after I'd started lifting it and modifying it. We went to a mud bog in Poland, New York. We bogged around, had a real good time, uh, beat the heck out of her. Sunday night, coming home Sunday from Poland to Utica, making a little weird noise in the front end. Didn't think anything of it. Washed it off a little bit. Monday morning, I wake up to come back to New Jersey and on the highway, it's making a lot of noise. And I'm thinking, man, just please make it home. I just, I'll get home and then I'll deal with it, whatever the freaking problem is. I get to about Schenectady and I hear this huge bang and the whole Jeep shakes violently. And I just see my front wheel going for uh, quicker than I am, my front driver's side wheel. What had happened was I must've broke a stud or my lugs came loose, but my wheel flew off going 80 miles an hour on the New York Thruway. I got two dogs in the back seat with me. Three of my lugs had broken. Another two were just mangled beyond repair. Um, I was able to wrestle the Jeep off to, off to the median. It was a whole thing, man. I had to get a special company to come and tow me because AAA can't tow you off the Thruway. And then some, you know, friggin' hillbilly Bob backwoods shop to charge me you know out the you know what for some for a new rotor and pads just to get home my alignment was screwed i bent my track bar it was oh god it was a whole thing man um that really minted me as a jeeper because it helped me to realize the stuff we do is real man we're playing with you know one ton vehicles that are moving 80 miles an hour so yeah it's all fun and games go mud bog on the weekend but if you got to get to work on monday you're going to need to know how to do more than just put big tires on something. You're going to need to know how to check your vehicle over and you're going to need to know what to look for. And you really need to become a master mechanic if you want to get into this weekend warrior Jeep lifestyle. If I could trailer my thing everywhere, that'd be awesome. But I can't afford a truck. I can't even afford a trailer. So I got to drive my Jeeps to the mud hole and then be able to get them back. Uh, another one that was very humbling. It was... Super Bowl Sunday a few years ago, we were going to have a party at our house. Brother-in-law was up. He's got a little Subaru RS. He's like, yo, man, let's go wheeling or something. I don't remember how it started. It doesn't matter. Um, so he wanted to take his Subaru RS wheeling a little bit. So I got in the WJ. He follows me in the Subaru RS. We're bombing around this little place I know uh, in like Randolph, New Jersey. And uh, we go across a frozen pond. WJ makes it, blasts up the bank, no problem. His front two wheels hit the bank and his back just sinks. Ice breaks and sinks the car, sunk up to about the trunk. And long story short, like five hours of trying to wrestle it out. I didn't have enough rope to pull it out with the WJ. Uh, you know, we're afraid to turn the vehicle off because we're afraid water's gonna back up in there. Uh, my wife's pissed off because it's her little brother's car that I just sunk in a friggin' lake. You know, I'm the idiot who told him he could make it and whatnot. Uh, we finally got my buddy with a 250 out there. I was able to pull him out with a snatch block. Car wasn't ruined. You know, obviously the wife didn't leave me over it, but it, that was a tense moment. It was again, humbling. So it was like, hey man, you're playing with real things here. You know, that kid didn't know any better. Um, I shouldn't have had him out there wheeling, you know? So uh, another, you know, there, there are a hundred more stories that I could tell, but I don't want to make this an hour long video. Uh, maybe at some point, Eric and I'll do like a, we'll have coffee. And uh, we'll sit and we'll chat on our oh shite moments. I know Eric's got a few. Uh, we've almost rolled vehicles and, and uh, we, there's, some, there's some things out there that we can tell you um, for sure. Oh man, Project Dan, Project Dan H, which I got a shout out for Project Dan at the end of this video. He says, give us your full Jeep story. Dan, there's just not enough time, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you a teaser and someday I'm gonna do it. It's, this Jeep right here saved my life, it really did. I was on a, a, a questionable road and this Jeep gave me something else to uh, focus my time on. Get good on figuring out the 4.0 and figuring out lifting and all that. Uh, I'll do that another day for sure, Dan. Appreciate the interest. Gary E. Dutchman says, dude, I like your videos and experience on WJs. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I just bought a 2,000 grand Cherokee Laredo, 2.5 inch lift, 17 inch Wrangler wheels on 33 Cooper AT3s. Wow, man, that's some big tires right there. Previous owner did not address control arms. He's 19 years old with original control arms. Terrifying considering you're on 33s. 
Can you say death wobble? <laughs> got my work cut out for me. So that was just a shout out, not really a question. Gary, good luck, man. If you got questions on death wobble, it sounds like you got it handled. We do have a video that have that has helped uh, some people, um, you know, figuring it out. But yeah, man, I, you might be in long arm territory if you're rocking 33s. I don't know. Uh, the Bass King 15 says top DIY mods for WJs, not meeting kits or aftermarket parts, more like DIY improvements. Um, I can't answer that right now, It'd be too long. I'm telling you, man, we're gonna get into more WJ content. What I will tell you, the second video I ever made was on making my own rear A-arm spacer for this Jeep. Now the A-arm is a thing that gets neglected by so many people trying to lift a WJ, all right? Uh, and what you do is, first of all, it screws up your geometry and it makes for a much rougher ride, but you're also wearing out that ball back there. There's a little ball joint on top of the, of the A-arm um, the three link A-arm in the back of a WJ. If you have it lifted anything above two inches and you don't have a spacer, go check that video. I'll put the card up in the corner. It's super simple. I make it out of a freaking cutting board. All right, I think the whole thing cost me 20 bucks. Great, I mean, forgive the video quality. I wasn't comfortable in front of the camera yet. It was my second video ever, but super good mod. Um, and we will get into some other really good ones uh, later down the road. I promise to do more WJ content. I can't just spill everything I know about WJs in one video, but I'm I'm dedicated. I realized that my, my Grand Cherokee channel got hijacked by an XJ. We love the XJ, but sorry, little buck, you gotta go on the sidelines. It's Willie's time to shine. Bob Smith says, what size lift looks best for an XJ? Just got a four and a half inch, but haven't put it on yet. Depends on what you're doing with it. And if it was any other Jeep, I'd say four and a half is too much, but XJ looks good on four and a half. Um, you can get some nice big tires under there. They'll still handle pretty well. And it's nice and simple because it's got the leaves in the back. For an XJ, I'd say four, four and a half. On a WJ or a ZJ, I'm a big fan of three inch lifts if you're still daily driving it because you don't have to change some other stuff and it still looks, it just, they look mean. You can get them to look mean. This thing has three in the front, three and a half in the back to compensate for the, um, tire carrier i think it looks good but yeah man four and a half on that xj is probably going to look real mean um depending on what size tires you put on her i had an xj with a four and a half inch lift on 33s and that thing looked perfect it was just proportionate the so the fender flares on which i like i like when they leave you leave the fender flares on an xj um yeah man that was good that's just one man's opinion though i think it's gonna look good again if you got facebook send us a picture of that thing when it's done we love seeing everybody's jeep you know major weakness says what are the best years for xjs and what years to avoid i don't think there's any year you need to avoid but there are some things that you need to know uh, they're called Renix XJs. It's the four liter before it got the Chrysler fuel injection or the ones that have the 2.8 V6. I think the 2.8 V6 is 84, 85, and 86. And I think the four liters before, uh, someone's going to correct me, 91 is considered Renix. Um, it's still got the Renault AMC style fuel injection. And it's just not as good of a motor. But the side to that is those Cherokees are more retro. That's when you could get the, um, was it the, the Pioneer and the Woody and the, the, the spiderized grills and stuff. So you balance that one. All through the 90s, they're really good. Uh, I'd say the best year is probably, my, I really like like a 95 right before OBD2 came in. Um, I also like the ones if you're going to daily drive it. I really like the like refreshed ones, the 97 to 01. Problem with those, in 2000 and 2001, there's an issue with the heads cracking um, if the Jeep overheats. Now, almost every four liter I've ever had, really, is actually been an 01 or a 2000. This is a 2000, that's a 2000, that other XJ I mentioned was a 2001. I've never had a problem with it. The key is if you have a 2000 or 2001 Cherokee or Grand Cherokee with a four liter, you can't let that thing overheat. If you see that needle creeping up, you stop immediately and figure out what the problem is. Because if they do overheat, it was a problem with the casting. The castings were bad. And so you'll crack your head and then you got a cracked head and now you got to go and get a new head and you got to put a new head gasket on. It's not the end of the world. The Jeep's not thrashed, but I know a lot of people that avoid the Renix Jeeps because they don't want to deal with the non AMC fuel injection. And I know a lot of people that avoid 2000 to 2001. Oh man. D Ethan Miller asked D and E decals. Dude, I am so sorry. This guy asked me for decals like a year ago, I, I swear, I wrote your uh, address down. I had an envelope with a friggin' stamp on it and I just forgot, honestly. I I got a terrible memory for stuff like that. Uh, what he's asking about, we do have decals. Eric and I printed them up. Our intention at some point is to start selling merchandise strictly for the purpose of, we gotta find some way to raise cash for the channel so that we can do interesting stuff. Like I said, we're not foodie bloggers or whatever else people do where 
it takes a ton of money to come up with like project vehicle or something you know we both got kids mortgage all that stuff there's not like there's a lot of extra cash to throw around at other vehicles so um we are flirting with the idea of trying to maybe sell some merchandise i don't know if anybody be interested maybe you, you know if you think that like a D, &D t-shirt is something that you would be consider buying to support the channel let me know down in the squawk boxes or something i don't like asking for money man i hate that i but you know youtube I don't know how much YouTube used to pay. People talk like you used to be able to get rich real quick off YouTube. Granted, we are a very, very tiny channel, Once maybe once we get bigger, but there's no real money there. Um, the point is, we have decals. Ethan, super sorry. Glad to know you're at least still kind of a viewer and you didn't just write us off. Um, I will get those in the mail to you. I still have your address uh, in the email. I'll get those out to you. Um, and everybody else, stay tuned. Maybe we're gonna try to sell some, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> our good buddy Frank, if y'all haven't noticed, Frank puts about five or six comments on every video we do, and if there is any innuendo or suggestive phrasing that's been left on the table, uh, Frank is going to catch you on it, and he's going he's gonna to bring it to light. So Frank's question is, does size really matter? Well, Frank, I guess that depends entirely on uh, what it is you are trying to accomplish. All right, that's pretty much the end of the questions. Uh, another thing that I've been doing that has been really very interesting uh for me and i think some of you have enjoyed it we've been doing polls all right like just fun stuff stuff i'll think of during the day you know i'd like i like to know where you guys are at and what kind of jeepers we have so we did three polls in the last month the first one was what kind of jeeping everybody's favorite was snow jeeping mud bogging rock crawling overlanding or mall crawling all right uh now i voted for snow jeeping because that's my personal favorite i expected like mud bogging or rock crawling to win snow jeeping took 48 percent uh followed by overlanding totally get it especially if you're like a grand cherokee guy overlanding is great uh bringing up next was mud bogging rock crawling and five percent said mall crawling i respect your honesty <laughs> uh we had 273 votes on that that's kind of cool uh next poll was about which upcoming vehicle you're most excited for the 2019 ranger the 2020 gladiator the 2020 ford bronco the 2020 jeep grand wagoneer or the 2021 land rover defender Again, you guys were right in line with what I was so, what my vote was, the 2020 alleged Jeep Grand Wagoneer that's going on the Dodge Dakota platform. It's going to be a full frame. You're going to get a 392 option. Super excited. After that, the uh, Gladiator and Bronco were almost tied, and no one really cares about the Ranger or the Land Defender, whatever the Land Rover thing is. Fair enough. The next one was I think the most interesting, what vehicle you would want in the zombie apocalypse, uh, what 90s vehicle, you had your uh, XJs, YJs, ZJs, TJs, WJs, and the winner was XJ, <laughs> uh, which probably lets me know where most of our viewers are at, and that makes sense, because I've been doing more XJ videos, which I'm gonna continue to do XJ guys, but I gotta pepper in some, some WJ guys stuff. Everything else more or less tied. WJ was second, um, TJ, ZJ, and YJ pretty much all tied. I, I dig it. So that, that was interesting. That's something I hope to keep doing and we'll probably announce the answers here because I think it's interesting. I think it's uh, something interesting. Let's see, what else do we have here? A um, couple people asked about my dogs. Actually, a lot of people have asked about my dogs, which I understand. I'm a dog person as well. Obviously, I got three dogs uh, and when I see a dog, I instantly want to know more about the dog than I do about the human behind them. So, I'll do real quick about the puppers. Uh, all of our dogs are named after Beatles songs, huge Beatles fans. Um, we got a 10 year old pit bull mix. They're all mixes mutts, you know what I mean? Those are the best kind. Uh, but his primary breed is like a, a pit bull. His name's Jude. Uh, something interesting about Jude, he's heterochromio, which means his eyes are two different colors. He's got a blue eye on this side. Uh, he's our sweetie, man. If we're being a pit bull, he's the one that'll lay with you on a couch when you're sick. And um, he's afraid of friggin' everything. He drives me goddamn crazy, but definitely a good little pupper. Crazy loyal. I'll tell you what, we could leave him outside all day, go to work, come back, and he'd just be sitting on the deck. No interest in going anywhere, no interest in leaving, just a real sweet pupper. Uh, after him, we've got a nine-year-old Shepherd Terrier mix. That's the black one with the ears you've seen all around. That's Eleanor Rigby, and she is, we call her the wolf. She's our little wolf, man. We got turkeys in the backyard and then some fields behind our property. She'll take off sometimes. Not as much now, she's getting a little older. When she was younger, she'd see a turkey or a deer, take off after that thing, be gone for three hours, and just eventually come back you know what i mean she's a little adventurer when i'm working on the jeep she likes to sit at the top of the property and just sort of look out over everything and i'm pretty sure what she's doing is she's protecting me you know that's the shepherd in her um again real sweet little pupper 
After her, we got Jojo. Uh, Jojo is a coon hound, some kind of hound anyway. Um, she is, what is she, three years old. Now, you've seen her most of the time because if, if I get into a Jeep, she's in the Jeep with me. You know what I mean? When I'm working in a Jeep, she'll just sit in the back seat the whole time. Loves being in a Jeep. Uh, so you see her bouncing around in the back seat of a lot of my videos. Um, she's, like I said, three years old, and she's still got her puppy energy. You know what I mean? She's crazy. She loves running, loves giving the other dogs a what for. And uh, believe it or not, I think she's the head of the pack in the house. I think she runs things, you know? It's definitely not Jude. She and Rigby kind of go at it, both being females, um, for the, the supremacy there. But thank you for your questions. I love talking about my dogs. Shoot, I could go and do an hour-long video all about the dogs. Uh, maybe at some point this summer we'll do like a Jeep dog thing and maybe I'll try to get uh, some... You know what? Yeah, go ahead. Tell me about your Jeep dogs. I love hearing about dogs, man. Dogs are so much better than people and way better than cats. Sorry if you're a cat owner, but cats are freaking terrible. Dogs though, right? Am I right? Dogs, okay. Last thing I want to do is Project Dan H. All right, he's my buddy. We're in Jersey. He's over there in Long Island. And uh, um, he's building an XJ. He's got a couple Mustangs he works on. He does some really cool stuff. I want to shout out his channel so that you guys have the opportunity to see his stuff. He does a ton of cool stuff. But the one thing that he did that friggin' blew my mind was he built a test bench for Jeep sensors. All right, now, Dan, I don't know what you do for a living. I don't know if you are uh, one of those electronical engineering types, but... Uh, what it is is he built this box and it has a couple different hookups and knobs and switches and he can test voltage continuity on jeep sensors so your tps is acting up you take it off you put it on this thing and you test what the voltage coming off of it is what voltage is going through whatever else really cool i, I watched the video like three or four times hoping i could make one I'm not there, man. <laughs> Electricity is definitely my Achilles heel. Now, I am getting better. I get a lot of questions on my electrical work uh, that I do in the videos. People kind of, like, think I'm doing it wrong or they're trying to challenge me. I, I don't always have the knowledge to explain why I know it's right, but I do know it's right. I'm trying to get better about that. Uh, but I haven't burnt down a Jeep yet, uh, though when I was much, much younger, I came dangerously close in this one with some real seriously sketchy wiring so check out project dan h i know it's a shame that dne can't just flood youtube with content so that you can have a non-stop stream maybe that's our 20 year goal to have uh dne television so at any hour of any day you can just turn it on and you get live dne but until then until then, I'm going to keep shouting out channels like Project Dan H, which will obviously be linked down below. Uh, I'm always mentioning uh, JTM and the Bearded Jeeper because they have small channels that otherwise, like mine, you know, small like mine, that otherwise you may not be able to find. And I know everybody likes having content. There's nothing more depressing than when I'm bored and in a mood to watch YouTube, but I've already watched every video that's new from all the channels I sub to. That sucks. So I'm always looking for new channels. If you guys are too, Project Dan H. I have fun doing this. Um, I think that this uh, viewer question serves a good purpose. Get a chance to address some of you uh, directly with some questions. And what, what it really does is it gives me the opportunity to gauge where you guys are at so that I can steer the channel in that direction. Um, as I do like making videos, but I don't wanna make videos that no one wants to see. So if you wanna leave me comments down in the body, uh, in the squawk boxes of this video, uh, questions or suggestions for future viewer uh, videos, uh, always you can find us on uh, Facebook. You can email us directly. Um, we love hearing from you guys. We definitely wanna help you as much as possible. We wanna share our knowledge and we wanna get your knowledge and recirculate it so that we get as much knowledge out there, all right? So, questions, comments down in the squawk boxes. If you like the video, like the video, sub to the channel, why not? All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I can't take the time right now to tell you what the best WJ mod I ever did was, but I can tell you what the worst was. <laughs> this was a really stupid idea, all right? If at any point you ever find yourself bolting an LED light bar to the hood of your Jeep, just stop and go to church and, and pray on it as <laughs> i'm telling you man <laughs> it was pretty stupid that's one of the things i'm gonna fix in the very near future just it looks stupid and yeah well you get it what's up buck we're not done yet i am still plugging for um, my campaign for the charity event the polar plunge is february 23rd 2019 uh myself and a bunch of people i know will be jumping in the atlantic ocean between now and february 23rd when the event happens i'm going to be adding this little blurb at the end of videos to see if there's anybody out there in the viewing audience who is in a position and is so inclined to help me raise funds for this uh polar plunge event 
all the proceeds go to the uh, Special Olympics in New Jersey. It's a great cause. There's a link down below where you can donate five, ten dollars. Goes a long way. Thank you guys for even entertaining the idea. Uh, there will be a video out after the polar plunge. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.